Buying Silver Investment of the Decade Gold and Silver Price Predictions for 2018 Gold and Silver Price Predictions for 2018 With such a solid end to 2017, it prompts the question what we might expect of gold prices in 2018. The most immediate question is whether or not it will pick up where it left off 2017 and continue its climb into the new year, or fizzle and spend the year going sideways or worse, down. I have refrained from the perennial turn of the year prediction sweeps takes for a number of years, but I will venture out on the limb this year to say a price in the mid minus $1,500 S looks achievable in 2018. Coming off two successive positive years, gold seems to be building towards something. Fizzling or dropping seem unlikely given 2017's surprise performance and the general state of global equity markets, most of which seem to be overpriced, overloved and over the top. 2017 will be recorded as a transition year for gold. 2018, in my opinion, will go down as the year gold reasserted itself as a primal force in the global financial marketplace. I base that opinion not so much on the fundamentals or a technical reading of the charts, or anything overly scientific for that matter, but rather on a gut feeling that comes with being in the gold business for 45 years. When all is said and done for 2018, after all the factors have been weighed and measured, I see sentiment, a thing that cannot be measured or weighed, emerging as the principal determinant for gold in 2018. Investment capital is forever rummaging around for an opportunity and smart money will always find what is undervalued. That in a nutshell is what gold has going for it as we enter the new year. In 2017, we saw the first signs of a sentiment-driven, smart money migration to gold, a vanguard led by professional investors who govern institutional trading desks and manage multi-billion dollar hedge funds. In 2018, cash flush private investors, absent the past year, will join with professional money in the pursuit of gold both in physical and paper forms. That will be good enough to generate a 20% improvement from December's closing number and put the gold price in the $1,550 minus $1,560 range. As for silver, I would not be surprised to see it trading over $22 at some point during the course of the new year, the equivalent of a 30% price increase. It has a history of outperforming gold on both the upside and the downside, and this time around is unlikely to be an exception. Silver will also continue to benefit from its new role as a safe haven asset and junior partner to gold in the asset preservation business. Buying silver could soon prove to be the investment of the decade. For many weeks we have been waiting patiently, like vultures perched on the branches of trees, for the large specks to go belly up and croak, and the good news is that they just have, so it's time for us to swoop down and feast on the carcasses, the carcasses being silver and the better silver stocks, which are at good prices here, and although they have already started rallying over the past week or two, the cot structure is now much healthier, suggesting that they will continue to advance. On the six-month silver chart we can see the breakdown from a symmetrical triangle that occurred late in November leading to a drop well into December, and also how silver has slowly recovered over the past two weeks. In itself this chart looks bearish, with a breakdown followed by a rally back up towards resistance, and moving averages in unfavorable alignment, and it is only when we consider the latest cots and then look at long-term charts that we realize that the setup is a lot more bullish than it looks at first sight on this six-month chart. Next we will look at a 18-month silver chart, the main reason being so that we can compare the peaks and troughs on it directly to the one-year cot chart placed below it. On this chart we can see that the silver price is within the confines of a large gently downsloping trading range bounded by approximately $15.25 on the downside and $18.50 on the upside. This chart makes clear why it turned up where it did a couple of weeks ago it had arrived at a zone of support towards its July lows. The latest silver cot chart shows a remarkable improvement in the cot structure in the space of just four weeks, remarkable because the drop in the silver price that triggered it was not all that great. What this cot chart shows us is that this latest drop in silver prices was the last straw for the large specs, who have thrown in the towel, with the huge profits made by Bitcoin speculators in recent weeks making them feel like right lemons. If you had to give a job description for the large specs in silver, the most accurate one would be bag holder since collectively they are always wrong 
and you certainly don't want to see them with a big long position if you are contemplating buying. Right now they are nowhere to be seen they have fled, which means that the coast is clear for smart money buyers. There have been some doubts expressed with respect to silver in the recent past along the lines that either it will drop to new lows, or double dip to its lows of approximately two weeks ago, but the latest cut suggests that a drop to new lows is probably out of the question, and further that while we cannot rule out a drop towards the lows of two weeks ago, it looks unlikely, and should it do so, aggressive buying will be in order. Here we should note that a favorable cut setup generally leads to a rally, but does not, by itself, mean that a new bull market is set to start, although it is normally a precondition for a new bull market. The latest hedgers chart, a form of cut chart, also looks good for silver, and because this chart goes back much further than the cut chart, it enables us to see what happened to the silver price following peaks on this chart going back years. The long-term 10-year chart calls to mind the excellent film Groundhog Day, where a guy keeps living the same day over and over, because we just keep trotting out the same description for the long-term silver chart, which does save work. Here it is again, with some adjustment, like gold, silver is marking out a giant head and shoulders bottom pattern, but in silver's case it is downsloping as we can see on its 10-year chart below, which reflects the fact that silver tends to underperform gold at the end of sector bear markets and during the early stages of sector bull markets. Prolonged underperformance by silver is there for a sign of a bottom. This chart really does show how unloved silver is right now, and while we have seen some deterioration in its volume indicators in recent weeks, more important is the big improvement in the cut structure detailed above. A break above the neckline of the pattern, the black line, will be a positive development, and more so a break above the band of resistance approaching the 2016 highs. Once it gets above this it will have to contend with a quite strong zone of resistance roughly between $26 and $28. Finally, we see that silver's best month of the year is coming right up. The conclusion is that silver is now a strong buy, and an even stronger buy in the event that it should react back short term towards its lows of about two weeks ago. While we can speculate about why the silver price should rise soon, with reasons such as a falling dollar, and funds flowing out of the cryptos as a result of the Bitcoin bust, an attack on Iran, etc., it is not really necessary as the charts speak for themselves. Big trouble for the silver market if Mexico monetizes its silver Libertad coin. Recently, there was a debate in the Mexican Congress on the proposal to monetize the silver Libertad coin. The debate took place during a forum for the promotion of savings for Mexicans. If Mexico decided to monetize its silver Libertad coin, it could have a severe impact on the silver market and price. How much of an impact would the monetization of the Mexican silver Libertad have on the market? There could be serious ramifications if we consider the vast amount of silver consumed by the minting of Mexican silver coins in the past. Before I get into that data, let's look at the following text from the article, The Mexican Congress Debates the Monetization of the Libertad Silver Ounce, on Hugo Salinas Prices Plata.com. Site, the central feature of the proposal is that the Central Bank of Mexico, Benzico, shall determine a value in pesos for the Libertad Silver Ounce, and that this value shall be slightly higher, by a percentage that would be defined in the corresponding law than the price of silver in the international market, in order to provide Banxico with an assured profit in minting and placing these coins in monetary circulation. If the price of silver should shoot upward, Banxico would have to issue new, higher quotes for the Libertad silver ounce, according to the formula to be established by law. In this way, again, the coin will remain in circulation, and since it has no nominal price stamped on it, it will avoid ending up like all the old silver coins that had stamped values at the refineries. Most of those old silver coins, once their content was worth more than the peso stamped value on their faces, ended up in the refineries. The holders of the coins sold their coins at a profit, for their silver content. This won't happen with the Libertad silver ounce, whose value will be adjusted upward, and benefit the saver, who will thus retain his purchasing power no matter what may happen with inflation. Thanks to owning silver Libertad ounces, 
the public savings will float on the ocean of currency through the years. The important feature in the proposal to monetize the silver libertad was that the Central Bank of Mexico would adjust the value of the coin based on the price of silver, rather than striking a permanent numerical value on the face of the coin. By basing the value of the silver libertad on the market value of silver, this would protect the Mexican citizen from the ongoing devaluation of the peso. For example, the Mexican peso has devalued 93% versus the US dollar since the mid-1970s, the Mexican peso was valued at $0.8006 to the US dollar in the mid-1970s but is now trading at $0.0570. Thus, the Mexican peso has lost 93% of its value in just the past 40 plus years. We can see the devaluation of the Mexican currency much better by looking at the relationship between the amount of silver contained in each coin versus the number of pesos struck on the face of the coin. The following table came from the Mexican's ILVERCOINS.net site, the peso minted between 1869-1913, contained 0.786 ounce of silver in the 1 ounce coin. The value struck on the front of the coin was 1 peso. However, if you look down to 1950, the 1 peso coin only had 0.1286 ounce worth of silver in it. The amount of silver contained in the 1 peso coin was 6 times less in 1950 than compared to 1913. Now, by examining the amount of silver in the 1913 1 peso of 0.786 ounce versus the 100 peso 1977-1979, of 0.6426, ounce, we can see that there was only 0.00642, ounce, of silver backing 1 peso in the late 1970s than the 0.786, ounce, of silver backing the 1 peso in 1913. Please understand that the Central Bank of Mexico stamped 100 peso on the face of the coin with only 0.6426 ounce of silver contained in it. Thus, the Mexican peso lost 99.2% of its silver content between 1913 and 1977. Mexico minted a vast amount of silver coins in the 1900s while I knew the official mint of Mexico produced a lot of silver coins in the past. I had no idea the huge amount until I looked up the data. According to figures put out by the Silvera GECoins.com, the Mint of Mexico produced a great deal of silver pesos and silver 50 centavos in the early to mid part of the 20th century, I focused on the mintage figures for these two coins in 1943. Total silver pesos and 50 centavos minted in 1943 were 89.2 million coins. However, the total silver contained in these two coins minted that year was 26.5 million ounce, Mos Mexico silver peso and silver 50 centavos, silver content 1943 silver peso equals 47,662,000 x 0.39 ounce, equals 18,588,180 ounces 1943 silver 50 centavos equals 41,512,000 x 0.19 ounce equals 7,887,280 ounces 1943 silver coins equals 89,174,000 equals 26,475,460 ounces I did not do extensive research on all the silver coins produced by the Mint of Mexico in 1943, but I would imagine there were others. For example, I found on the same website listed above that 3,955,000 of the Mexican silver 20 centavos were produced in 1943 as well. However, the amount of silver in each of the 20 centavos was only 0.08 ounce, which netted a total of 316,400 ounces of silver consumed. Regardless, the Mint of Mexico produced one heck of a lot of silver coins during that period. Now, 
if we consider that the Mexican government consumed 26.5 mos of silver to mint the silver peso and silver 20 centavos coins for a total population of approximately 20 million in 1943, how much silver would they consume to protect the value of its current 130 million citizens? Big trouble for the silver market if Mexico monetizes its silver Libertad coin as I stated in the previous section, the mint of Mexico consumed 26.5 mos of silver in producing their silver peso and silver 50 centavos coins in 1943. That being said, let's look at Mexico's total silver mine supply during the same year. According to the information put out by the U.S. Bureau of Mines, Mexico produced 86.4 mos of silver in 1943, thus, Mexico consumed 30% of its domestic mine supply just to produce two of its silver coins in 1943. Furthermore, the population of Mexico at the time was approximately 20 million. Thus, the mint of Mexico consumed 1.3 ounces of silver in the peso and 50 centavos coins for each citizen. That's a lot of silver. Now, let's fast forward to present day. The amount of silver libertades, the mint of Mexico, produces today, are a fraction of what they were in the past. According to the data put out in the 2017 World Silver Survey, there was only 800,000 ounces of silver libertades produced in 2016, as we can see, the mint of Mexico produced 800,000 ounces of silver libertades versus 40.3 mos of silver eagles fabricated by the U.S. Mint last year. The irony about those two figures is that the U.S. had to import silver to produce the 40.3 mos of silver eagles as its domestic mine supply was only 35 mos. On the other hand, Mexico produced 186 mos of silver in 2016, more than five times that of the United States. Something is seriously wrong here. Why is Mexico exporting all of its silver for worthless fiat money if its citizens could acquire domestically minted silver libertades to protect their wealth in the future? I would imagine the U.S. government has something to do with controlling Mexican officials in keeping their citizens entirely in the dark about silver as money and a store of value. If the proposal to monetize the silver libertad gains traction in Mexico, the silver market would be in serious trouble. Here's why. Currently, Mexico produces about 186 mos of silver, if the silver libertad was monetized and 30% of Mexico's silver production was used to produce these coins, as it was in 1943, it would consume nearly 56 mos of the country's domestic mine supply. Moreover, with a population of 130 million in Mexico, 56 mos of silver libertads would amount to less than a third of an ounce of silver for each citizen. While it is an excellent idea that the silver libertad is monetized as protection for Mexican citizens against the ongoing devaluation of the peso, it will be an uphill battle in state politics. Unfortunately, the world depends on a lot of silver coming from Mexican mines to supply the global jewelry, electronics, and investment industries. If its citizens consumed a significant portion of Mexico's silver production in acquiring vast numbers of silver libertads, it could severely impact the silver market and price. It will be interesting to see how far this proposal to monetize the silver libertad goes in the Mexican government. the huge profits made by Bitcoin speculators in recent weeks making them feel like right lemons. If you had to give a job description for the large specs in silver, the most accurate one would be bag holder, since collectively they are always wrong, and you certainly don't want to see them with a big long position if you are contemplating buying. Right now they are nowhere to be seen they have fled, which means that the coast is clear for smart money buyers. There have been some doubts expressed with respect to silver in the recent past along the lines that either it will drop to new lows, 
or double dip to its lows of approximately two weeks ago, but the latest cut suggests that a drop to new lows is probably out of the question, and further that while we cannot rule out a drop towards the lows of two weeks ago, it looks unlikely, and should it do so, aggressive buying will be in order. Here we should note that a favorable cut setup generally leads to a rally, but does not, by itself, mean that a new bull market is set to start, although it is normally a precondition for a new bull market. The latest hedgers chart, a form of cut chart, also looks good for silver, and because this chart goes back much further than the cut chart, it enables us to see what happened to the silver price following peaks on this chart going back here be good enough to generate a 20% improvement from December's closing number and put the gold price in the $1,550 minus $1,560 range. As for silver, I would not be surprised to see it trading over $22 at some point during the course of the new year, the equivalent of a 30% price increase. It has a history of outperforming gold on both the upside and the downside, and this time around is unlikely to be an exception. Silver will also continue to benefit from its new role as a safe haven asset and junior partner to gold in the asset preservation business. Buying silver could soon prove to be the investment of the decade. For many weeks we have been waiting patiently, like vultures perched on the branches of trees, for the large specks to go belly up and croak, and the good news is that they just have so it's time for us to swoop down and feast on the carcasses, the carcasses being silver and the better silver stocks, which are at good prices here, and although they have already started rallying over the past week or two, the cot structure is now much healthier, suggesting that they will continue to advance. On the six-month silver chart we can see the breakdown from a symmetrical triangle that occurred late in November leading to a drop well into December, and also how silver has slowly recovered over the past two weeks. In itself this chart looks bearish, with a breakdown followed by a rally back up towards resistance, and moving averages in unfavorable alignment, and it is only when we consider the latest cuts and then look at long-term charts that we realize that the setup is a lot more bullish than it looks at first sight on this 6-month chart. Next we will look at a 18-month silver chart, the main reason being so that we can compare the peaks and troughs on it directly to the one-year cut chart placed below it. On this chart we can see that the silver price is within the confines of a large gently downsloping trading range bounded by approximately $15.25 on the downside and $18.50 on the upside. This chart makes clear why it turned up where it did a couple of weeks ago it had arrived at a zone of support towards its July lows. The latest silver cot chart shows a remarkable improvement in the cot structure in the space of just four weeks remarkable because the drop in the silver price that triggered it was not all that great. What this cut chart shows us is that this latest drop in silver prices was the last straw for the large specs, who have thrown in the towel, with 2017 will be recorded as a transition year for gold. 2018, in my opinion, will go down as the year gold reasserted itself as a primal force in the global financial marketplace. I based an opinion not so much on the fundamentals or a technical reading of the charts, or anything overly scientific for that matter, but rather on a gut feeling that comes with being in the gold business for 45 years. When all is said and done for 2018, after all the factors have been weighed and measured, I see sentiment, a thing that cannot be measured or weighed, emerging as the principal determinant for gold in 2018. Investment capital is forever rummaging around for an opportunity and smart money will always find what is undervalued. That in a nutshell is what gold has going for it as we enter the new year. In 2017, we saw the first signs of a sentiment-driven, smart money migration to gold, a vanguard led by professional investors who govern institutional trading desks and manage multi-billion dollar hedge funds. In 2018, cash flush private investors, absent the past year, will join with professional money in the pursuit of gold both in physical and paper forms. That will <music> Buying Silver Investment of the Decade Gold and Silver Price Predictions for 2018 Gold and Silver Price Predictions for 2018 With such a solid end to 2017, it prompts the question what we might expect of gold prices in 2018. 
The most immediate question is whether or not it will pick up where it left off 2017 and continue its climb into the new year, or fizzle and spend the year going sideways or worse, down. I have refrained from the perennial turn of the year prediction sweeps takes for a number of years, but I will venture out on the limb this year to say a price in the mid minus $1,500 S looks achievable in 2018. Coming off two successive positive years, gold seems to be building towards something. Fizzling or dropping seem unlikely given 2017's surprise performance and the general state of global equity markets, most of which seem to be overpriced, overloved and over the top.